Hi everybody, look at this fun page. I'll be back in a second and show you how I did it. I have a two page spread here. It's just something that I had leftover paint and smushed it down. I'm going to smush some more and uh, then just do some stamping on top. I got some really cool stamps from In Love Arts. This is Barn Door Distress Paint. And I am going to just give it a spritz here with quite a bit of water. And then I just have a piece of acetate that I'm sure probably came from a stamp set or something. And I'm just going to lay it down and kind of smush it around and get some more color going here. Overlap what's already there. I want some more water. Okay, then I get a big wipe get into the bottom of my box of wipes here. I just want to get this out of my way. I'm just starting with the warm colors because that's what was already on the page. going to wipe this off. I'm just going to let those mix with each other. A little juicier. I just like the organic feel of putting paint on this way. Plus, it's a really fast way to get a good background going. Now, I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to add a cool color. The Distress Paint is permanent when it's dry, so I'm going to dry this really well, and then we can layer on top. I'm going to add a couple of blues. I have the new speckled egg. I keep wanting to say Robin's egg. Speckled egg. And I'm just going to get a little of that down here and there. Love, love this color. A little more smush right there. This one I do have in the flip top cap, which I prefer. All my other ones are the dauber caps. And then, because I have this little bit of purple down here, I know it's more of a red purple, but I have some chip sapphire, and I'm just going to add just a few little touches of that here and there. Like on top of that, maybe. Move that out a little. There we go. I don't want a lot of it, because it's a pretty strong color. Just some pops here and there. I don't want that edge. No, 
on that edge, so I probably shouldn't put that edge down, huh? Mm. Just coming in a line on here. Come on. There. And I'm going to dry this and then we'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do on it. Okay, everything's dry. I have some Tim Holtz tissue collage paper called Typeset. It comes on a roll like that. And I just love the typography on it. And since this is and since this is abstract, I'm going to start with this, and we should be able to see a lot of the color through the paper. It's not quite as thin as like regular tissue paper, but it's pretty thin. You can see, you can still see the colors and the edges kind of just melt into the background which is really cool. I like that the best. So I'm just going to get a few pieces of this down. Putting matte medium, just fluid matte medium underneath and then also on the top to help stave off any wrinkles that want to come, wrinkles and bubbles. Okay, I have some stamps from In Love Arts and I will link the um, link to these particular stamps. I have these two. Um, I might use this one. These are all from In Love Arts. So we'll see how they look and how many we want, but I'm thinking these in the corners. So I'm just going to start there. I have not used these before, so I'm going to ink it up really good with some black archival ink. Archival is permanent. So These are fairly fine lines. And I'm just going to start in the corner. This book is getting thick on this side, so I'm going to lean into it. As Tim Holtz would say, stamp with purpose. So that's what I will do. Meaning just push down everywhere. Don't give up too quick. The longer it's in contact with the page, the better the image will be. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that just like, I just love it. It's just automatically with the color underneath, you've got art. So easy, fun. Doesn't have to be something, you know. down everywhere. Try and get good contact. That's pretty good. We lost a little right there, but that's okay. And then the other one is smaller. I probably should have done them opposite. I think it's smaller. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to just do one small one down here and then the other big one up there. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I get down there. Okay, over here. It was out of my way. 
in this side because it's got so many unused pages. Not so hard to stamp on. Have a little toilet leakage problem happening. Had some plumbing issues taken care of yesterday. The sink was faucet was dripping and the plumber came and fixed the faucet but never advised us to get the air out of the lines before we flush the toilet. So when the toilet got flushed it sounded like someone set a bomb off in the toilet and now it's leaking through the ceiling. So <laughs> we have an even bigger problem than a dripping faucet. Okay so we have our black and white images started here and I think I'm just going to stick with black and white. I kind of want to put this one on here but I'm just not sure if it goes. I don't think it goes very well. I think I'm going to skip that one. I have some smaller ones I got from In Love Arts. Okay, I've chosen some Tim Holtz paper dolls that I'm going to do next and I have a Ranger embossing ink pen and I am just going to color all over his suit and then we're going to use some of the new embossing glaze and emboss it glaze it, emboss it, glaze it, glaze it I guess I'm going to put vintage photo on him. I don't know how fast this stuff dries. You want it to be wet when you put the... And this is vintage photo. And then I'm just going to sprinkle it all over where I put the embossing ink. I can see now a few spots that I missed, so I'm just going to go back in with a little more ink and try and ink up those spots. If that doesn't clog up the pen, I don't know. It might. We'll see. I need tweezers, I think. There we go. Alright. Set him up there and put this back in my jar. And I'll have to admit, for years and years, I've said I don't really want to do embossing never bought any embossing powders or embossing inks or anything until I saw these embossing glazes and then I had to have them so I bought some and here we go You can probably start see it starting to melt now. It takes a minute for my heat tool to heat up hot enough. And I'm going to turn it around so I don't burn my fingers. There's still a couple little spots that I missed, but I'm going to just chalk that up to 
inexperience with embossing powder. Okay, I think that's it. So can you see that? So cool. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of fossilized amber on his hat. I just have old measuring spoons that make it real easy to just get it right where you want it. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just flying it everywhere. Alright, I'm just going to hold it over here and emboss it away from what's on the table. Can you still see? Maybe. Take a second. And there we go. Alright, I'm going to sit him on my book. Put this back in the drawer. I used some of these earlier today, and I got to tell you, I had powder everywhere. I'm sure I'll probably get a little better at it as I go, but okay, so I have quite a few of these. I'm just going to keep going, turn off the camera, and get these done, and then I'll be back. Okay, paper dolls are all embossed, and I definitely need practice, but, but it's fun. I didn't do the neatest job, but if you haven't seen them or used them, I hope you can see the shine on that. It's They're translucent, which is cool, especially for on the paper dolls, because all of the markings of the clothing and everything show through. And I got a little bit of some on her face, and then I missed a spot. I didn't do anything on the dog, but I used fossilized amber, peeled paint, um, vintage photo, uh, wood smoke. That's not right, but it's something like that. <laughs> um, speckled egg. On this one, I put fired brick, but it didn't turn out. I missed a whole bunch of spots. So I went back over it. This is fired brick on her bow. But I went back over it with vintage photo. And you can see this is vintage photo here. So you can mix the colors evidently. I mean, I that was all dry. And then I just used the dauber and went back over it and redid another color on top and they kind of mixed together and to make a third color and this one was oh I can't remember now hang on I'll link them all down below um rusty hinge that's what this is that's vintage photo this is rusty hinge and I went back over the top of her dress that I had done in fired brick with rusty hinge. All right, stand corrected. So now what I think I'm going to do is I have this little background stamp from In Love Arts and I think I'm going to stamp behind not every one of these paper dolls. If I can get it out of the package I will. There we go. I'm going to stamp behind some of them just to give a little more interest in background detail. I'm going to use the archival ink in jet black. And for sure behind these girls because this is pretty bare right here so I'm going to get that stamped on there. I 
like that stamp. And then they can just go right on top of that. And then I think I'll go up here behind the guy that's sitting on the paper. I think that's all I'm going to do. Three's good. So I'm going to glue these guys down and then I also have this stamp from In Love Arts and I am going to put a word or two I think on the page. I really like these. So let me get these glued down. And I'll okay I've got everybody <clears throat> glue down. I put some little pieces of paper underneath them just to kind of anchor their feet so they didn't look like they were floating. And now I'm just, I've done all of them except for this little guy. I'm just going around the right side and the shadow side with some Stabilo pencil just where the shadows would be. And I'm just activating it with a little bit of matte medium in my brush. I'm just kind of pushing in, scumble and push in toward the figure to just kind of create a bit of a shadow, help them stand out a little more. And I'll just bring this onto the paper too so it has a little more age to it. If you watch me, you know, watch my channel, you know that I love the vintage look. So even though this is a bright background, you can still use vintage elements and have something that looks a bit vintage but is just maybe a little bit more fun and colorful. So I'm going to think about some words to go on here. I'm not quite sure. This little guy got a bit dark because his suit was already dark gray and then when I went around with the Stabilo he kind of went into the page a little more than I wanted him to. But because I put it down with matte medium I'm not going to be able to lift very much of it off. But that's why I use matte medium so that the Stabilo is a little more permanent than it is when you put it when you move it and activate it with water. So once it's down it's kind of hard to move again. But he's okay. We can see a little bit of that paper on the side of him there, so we'll leave him be. Alright, I'm going to decide what I want to stamp on here, and then I'll be back and we'll do it and finish. couldn't think of anything to, <laughs> anything to say, so I'm just going to fill in a little bit. I have this stencil, floral stencil from In Love Arts, and I'm just going to put a few flowers here and there where I have empty spots and that'll be that'll be that so let me grab some paint daubers and I'm gonna stick with the colors I used in the background I think so let's go for didn't get a whole lot of this but it is here and there this is the chip sapphire I'm just going to put some down on my mat. And it's okay if these are um, just kind of pale. And I'm just going to pick and choose here. Yeah, that's okay.
So, you got flowers instead of words. If I think of something clever, I may come back and add some words, but we're going to leave it for now. I'm going to leave you for now. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you will shop at In Love Arts. Their prices are really great. They have a huge selection, especially of cutting dies and, and cling stamps. Um, just a lot at really great prices. They are shipped from the U.S. Almost everything, I think, comes pretty quickly. So all the links will, to the stamps um, that I used in the, the stencil, the stamp that I didn't use, <laughs> this, this stamp, and these corner stamps, all adds up to a really fun page. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Give me a big old thumbs up if you like this. Share it out to someone else who you think might like it. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you did that. And if you ring the bell, you'll be notified when I upload my next video. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye!